What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your main man, Brian Black, and this is the next come up. On this edition of The Next Come Up, I get to interview actor extraordinaire, a 25-year acting veteran, Christopher James Baker. Christopher can be seen on this season, season six of ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which airs every Friday night on your local ABC network. On the show, Christopher plays the villainous Malachi. Now, during the interview, you'll also like this too. Christopher talks about a yet another upcoming comic book related project that he's working on but this time it's not for marvel it's for dc comics so you're definitely going to want to stay tuned and find out all about that and not only that christopher talks about his upbringing as an actor and what he believes it takes to become a successful actor so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to let you go now before i do that i just want to remind you don't forget to like this and share this on all your social media platforms and also leave a comment let us know what you think. So, that being said, until the next time I'm before you, my name is Brian Black, and I am hence now and forevermore unapologetically black. Brian Black. Now, Chris, so just kind of getting into it a little bit, obviously I know I denote an accent. So where, where are you from originally? Australia. Ah. So, yeah, I was, so, yeah. Born in Australia and grew up in Australia, and then um, I'm currently, like I'm now here in in Brooklyn in Greenpoint. Okay. I've been here for ten years. Um, my wife and I moved over here ten years ago to, uh, you know, have have a bit of a crack, and 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 we now have two little American kids. I've got a six year old girl and a three year old boy, and they were born right here in. In Brooklyn, so yeah, we're we're kind of we're here now. They're Brooklynites officially, right? <laughs> now, and you've been acting for a, a very long time, 20, 25 years, if I understand. Yeah, I, yeah. God, I, when you say it like that, it makes me sound old. No, and, you know, it's funny. I thought about it after I said it. My, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. No, I'm I'm kind of proud of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, like I was. I grew up in a little country town in Australia that that um, and it was something that I sort of knew that I that I maybe wanted to do I it was just that there was nothing else I wanted to do and I sort I sort of felt that that I could do it acting I mean right right and, and but there was no opportunity for it in in the place I grew up and then and then I traveled for a few years after high school and then and then um, I ended up getting a scholarship to a to the to the drama school that I went to, which was like a three-year, like full-time drama course, mm -hmm. and, and I did that and, and kind of finished that when I was about 21, and and then oh, wow. like the people that I went through that with, we all started a theatre company, and we just sort of started doing it. Um, you know, making work and, and telling stories in in Sydney, and and I did work there for a while, and and had some did some great stuff, and and, and got bits and pieces like mm -hmm. on the Condemned and stuff. Like right, right. Whenever a big production came into town, it was like that was. But I I got a taste for it, and and I wanted the sort of work that I wanted to do wasn't happening in Australia. Right. Because like, the industry there is quite small. Right. And unless you're the unless you're the the five or six Australian superstars, mm. you, you know, you're not you're not gonna get the work on the on the ten films that get made that year. So right. so that's why we we made the decision to 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 come over here and kind of throw my throw my hat in the ring and, and, and on a bigger scale, which was you know, which is, it's always hard starting again, mm -hmm. like going back to zero. 
yeah when it knows you and you don't have anything and then kind of working your way back up again so, now yeah. what what was it in you that what was it that sparked that passion for acting especially considering like you said in a place where you know the, the industry was kind of small um good question what was the spark i think um it's it's funny how these things come together it was a combination of a lot of things as i think is true of anyone and this nature or nurture question my older brother was a professional swimmer was an olympic swimmer oh wow so he had the sports thing covered mm -hmm. so i didn't want to get into sport because he was like the superstar of the place that i grew up in so that led me into kind of what's the other thing i can do and that was playing music in bands and things and then that led to art and i don't know it just sort of followed on and then the, i think the first time I, i i kind of hit on a a, a version maybe it was at the end of high school of, of performing and and just something kind of clicked and i went oh innately i sort of went oh, i i i can do this right get it and i'll tell you <laughs> something else that my what growing up mm -hmm. i used to lie a lot <laughs> and, and one day my mum turned to me after this big long escapade of, of this sort of story that i've been telling that was just not true and was at complete odds of my brother and sister and my my mum had sided with me which was wrong because i was just bald face lying right and it kind of eventually all came out and i can remember her just saying at one point you really cross like she was really upset and she mm. went you should be an actor because <laughs> i believed you over everybody else and and i mean that sounds weird but that was part of it too i don't know it was right. a bunch of you could you, but i don't know the spark yeah was just i i've always and then i've just always loved movies and cinema and shows and right yeah movies have always been my biggest passion so mm -hmm. i wanted to do when i realized that was a thing you could do that's what I wanted to do. Was there a specific genre that you that you grew up on? Um yeah, like Spielberg 80s, 90s just adventure. Yeah. Like like that's that's when I was hitting my strides as a kid when it was ET and Ghostbusters yeah, and same here. like all that good stuff yeah. and then and that's when I fell in love with going to the movies and then as I got older and movies kept getting better as I got older and then it went through and then you're like a teenager and then suddenly you know you see Taxi Driver for the first time and then right. Michael Mann's making Heat and then Point Break comes out and then yeah. Fight comes out and then like it's just just yeah. keep better and better and better and I don't know it's always been there as the kind of companion of of, of, of youth almost of, yeah of youth and yeah. and and, of, and I guess in the same way that you know you can you can read as much as you want you can watch as much as you want like mm -hmm. as deep as you can go there's always more to explore like if you then go oh my gosh I just watched this weird kind of great french film and who's the director and yeah. what what have they done and then you start following it down and and i don't know this this is tapestry of getting to connect with stories and worlds mm. that you don't know and i've just always loved that and wanted to be a part of like when yeah making that isn't it crazy how um those movies and i didn't and that's i kind of wanted you i didn't want to say i didn't want to give a time period because i didn't want to make you feel old again but <laughs> you know i figured we, we were probably around the same um from the same time period in terms of you know cinema and, and content you know uh, isn't it crazy how and you're in the th thick of it you know given what you do obviously um how a lot of those things that we loved growing up in the 80s you know, the, the ghostbusters the breakfast clubs the for me coming to america is you know oh my god yeah oh my god it's all yeah it's crazy isn't it crazy how first of all trading places trading places <laughs> you know isn't it crazy how those movies spe specifically from that era kind of shaped the framework for cinema in the 21st century to the point where we're going back and remaking these movies number one 
But then, you know, just about. I, I mean, yes, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I just saw the ads for um, Rebel Wilson and Anne Hathaway are doing a remake of um, Hustler uh, or something. Yeah, it's called, the movie's called The Hustler, and it's um, oh my gosh, I just blanked on it. With Steve Martin and um, when that when they were the the con men. Oh my gosh, forgot the name of it. Oh, um, Steve Martin, not 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 the one with Harold Ramis. Um, oh gosh, tell me what I like drop like in the middle of the interview. <laughs> Whether the con men and they bring and. Anyway, it's a mm. yeah, it's it's in the it's in the remake territory. Oh my gosh, that's going to drive me insane. I'll remember it in a minute. Um, but yeah, what like seeing? I mean, I think that's true of everything. Like I I, I see some kids pulled up in the, in a car out here last night outside of our apartment, and they were playing like they were playing a Bon Jovi track, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on a steel horse I'll ride like just wanted dead or alive like and they're young kids but I'm like but that was that was what I was listening to when I was driving around in 2018 and I think it's like, I don't know maybe it's maybe it's a bigger because they were good films mm-hmm. Dirty, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels ah uh, yes it's a remake of Dirty Rotten mm-hmm. Scoundrels okay I think that's what I was thinking. How cool is it, or how exciting is it for you, rather, that you know you're working on, and I'm just jump right to it. You know the, these projects for, um, first of all, like Agents of Shield. You're on Agents this season of Agents of Shield, where you play uh, Malachi, right. uh, an, an assassin, correct? It, yeah. 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 So I first mean, of all, wait. Now, were you were you into the comic books too, as a, as a young I was, man? I was into comics, not hugely. I had a bunch of friends that were majorly into them, mm-hmm. um, uh, but I was well across, yeah, the Marvel world and the DC world and 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 various characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when 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 I found out that I was going to be doing something for in the Marvel world, like in the Marvel universe, as mm-hmm. they call. It, um, that was that was a huge thrill because I had like I said I had like some of the mates I was growing up with and like buddies back in Australia and everything like that was like when when I got to send them a message going um, I'm going to be a character in the Marvel Universe which in a weird way if, you know if you're not a fan and you're not into it that may not mean much but right. if you are then it's like oh you now exist in the lexicon of right of the pantheon of these kind of characters that, that the people that, that love them and grew up with them and that in a way it's what's so wonderful about comics and, and the way they're written and you know these archetypes and the battle of good and evil and, and how you fall in the middle of it can, mm-hmm. can have such a good positive influence on on kids growing up and um, like if you're from a small country town or whatever, but the idea that you can connect to to, to these bigger ideas and yeah, when when I got to, to kind of walk on set um, and and you know meet some of those actors and and the the creative people involved and just be like, yeah, I'm. I'm in a Marvel show. This is super dope. It was, yeah, it was a real thrill, man. It was like, yeah, can't say enough about it. Um, what was it like for you to kind of acclimate to the set, um, given the fact that the cast, the, the core of the cast, have been together for so long? It was, it was easy. Um, for a, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I've kind of been, I guess what they call a journeyman actor for a while. Like, you know, I've been hustling and gigging and, and doing right. guest stars here and a drop in on this show and that. So you get, you get a facility for being able to um, 
quickly acclimate to to a new situation and how it's working and what the set's like and everything like that. So mm. you, you build that kind of armor up a little bit. But then on this show, for the same reasons, but because they have been doing it, this was season six that I was joining. Yeah. And like you say, a lot of them have been doing it. So that's like seven years they've been at. The crew is just a lot of the like a lot of them have just been doing it the whole time. So there's no kinks. There's no there's no one there that's not on board and and on the mission. And and they it was a beautiful set. It was like clockwork and right. it was easy and it was fun. And I think everyone knows that that it's a cool job and that they're making something fun. And it's you know this season set in space and they you know we're doing space stuff and. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, and and I think the they were just really welcoming of, of the new people that are going to come in and help make it cool. Right now, do um, you? Um, and I'm sorry, excuse me for cutting you off. Do you? Because um, I actually saw last week. I actually watched the show as as a as a fan. So I, I'm. Oh, right. oh really? Cool. Yeah. So this was actually a good coincidence. I had I literally sat down on Monday maybe to watch Friday's episode, which you were in. Right on. So. So for those of pe for those people who don't know, um, I kind of gave him a little tease, but tell him, can you tell us a little bit about Malachi, about your character? So Malachi is um, a Chronicon, who's like for fans of the show, Enoch is is the only other character that that we've met so far in the Marvel universe. Who's and so my character Malachi is of his race, right. but they're a race of, they're sentient robots who, who are maybe a couple of thousand year old each um, that can sort of regenerate and, and kind of change how they need to be, right. but Enoch, who's, who's been an integral part of the, the other S.H.I.E.L.D. seasons, is one of the um, more personable ones. and. Um, Malachi is more one of the um, bounty hunter type. Uh, so it was, it was, it was really fun because the only, like when I was kind of getting into it and doing my work about it, the only real point of reference, because the Chronicoms don't really exist much in the comic world. They were kind of an amalgam of, of some other ideas, I think, but they've written within specifically for the show. Mm -hmm. And so the only real point of reference or anything that had to be hung to was sort of the work that Joel Stoffer, the guy that plays Enoch, had done. Okay. Who I got to hang out, who's amazing, who's just a super cool guy mm -hmm. and really fun and lovely and was has just been on this kind of great ride with with the shield show and i was like so man what are we what what is it he's like, i don't know i'm it's like this it's like this this is what i thought it's like that i found this out and so i kind of did this fun thing of, of being able to base it all my and then watching it sort of basing it a bit on what joel's doing but it's like all right if joel's the kind of nice version of these guys what would the, the kind of soldier version of right these guys and just kind of running from there so it was um yeah but when when you get the opportunity to which is such a gift to like if sometimes you get a casting brief and it's like yeah he's 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 a dad or or, or he's a he's a guy that works in a shop and he does this and it's like okay cool i can do that when they go, here's a intergalactic bounty hunter that has a teleporter and is maybe two thousand years old. You know <laughs> what are you gonna do? You can do whatever you want, really, because right. no one's gonna go. Well, that doesn't make sense, really. Right. Do you know any three thousand year old intergalactic bounty hunters? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's like our only frame of reference for those type of characters are Terminator. Right, T2, right. <laughs> and Star Trek The Next right. Generation. Like, that's all we got. We got the board. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. 
yeah. to, be, to, to be in that world with, with like those guys just nudging the edges of that world out it's pretty cool absolutely pretty now cool. so i know this was your this was malachi's first appearance so do you get to be uh, a little more physical as they say as the kids say these days did you be a little more physical with the uh with the main characters there um i definitely we get we we tussle but not in i think i think malachi is a little bit more of a kind of commander at a distance sort of feel um there's a lot you know he's definitely causing trouble Mm -hmm. but but not not so much in in the actual fisticuffs side of things right right Right. Now, was that something that you were anticipating? Because I know, uh, having watched the show, the, the fight scenes are tremendous. So was that something that you took into consideration, you know, before, you know, when you, once you got this role, you knew it was going to be kind of guns and all this other stuff going on? Uh, yeah, uh, the fight scenes are amazing, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Like the choreography and the stunt team and everything, it's amazing. I was hoping that, you know, that I was going to get to kind of lean into that stuff and, mm-hmm. and get to go, but a lot of a lot of how this stuff happens, um, you just don't know until you un- until you kind of end up there. So I didn't really. I and this is true. When when I first auditioned for it, I thought it was and it was written as just a one-off kind of guest star. Well, I, thought, I was like, I'm going to go down there, shoot one episode, and then and then we'll be done. But as it turned out, it turned into a a bigger thing that they had going on so there's there's a lot of stuff like that that if it's not if it's not on the page there then it's like oh well I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be in any fights right but then oh it might happen later on so mm-hmm. you always kind of hope that, that that but then yeah you hope that that stuff happens particularly when when the when the stunt crew and the and the choreography is so good because they make you look so good. Yeah. Now, you, you, you mentioned um, the word secrecy while you were talking. Um, given that this, you got, I'm sure you guys, you guys were filming and they had scheduled to release the season after uh, Avengers Endgame. How much secrecy was there around the, uh, sh- uh, around the shoots? It's it's so crazy. Um, well, it's not crazy. It makes sense because if. It makes sense because if that stuff leaked, it would be so disappointing for so many people. Right. When you look at the numbers that that Endgame did, and and you know, it's like there's so many people that are just loving these films and the story and, and this world. So yeah, let's protect it and mm-hmm. um, for story reasons. So it seems sometimes bizarre to me as as an actor that that I I might have a moment of going oh okay now in episode four it turns out this is happening why didn't you tell me this at the beginning because I could have added this into my character work or could have done something but but I understand the need for the level of secrecy because you know they might be handing you a prop or they might be doing this or you might they might be showing something that is totally entwined with that much bigger picture and it was a real eye-opener too like being in some of the table reads and talking to some of the producers about and some of the writers about what their writing room is like when they're writing the shield episodes because Mm -hmm. they have to make sure that everything they do fits into the bigger to 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 the bigger so they were They were basically like having a writing room that was in coordination with the writing room on on Endgame wow. to make sure that whatever they were doing, they're like, we just changed this plot point about this character, so then you guys have to change this about this, so this can't happen. And then they're, wow. you know, it's just this incredible mesh of which is incredible and and wonderful and i think such a great extension of what the comics have always been which is just this sort of that mishmash of worlds colliding and crossing over and yeah 
No. Now, being that you are one of the few select actors who have actually done projects for both DC Comics and Marvel Comics, right? Um, first of all, how how are those? Are, are there different approaches for um, for first of all? Let me back up. How does that feel to even kind of know that? And I know you talked about your friends kind of being like, "Oh, you're a Marvel! Oh my God!" You know. So now, then when you go going back, when you go and tell them, "Oh yeah, I'm doing this DC project," and you're like. It's, do they kind of pressure you to make pick a side like what what's their reaction to that yeah like how dare you betray marvel and go and do a dc project <laughs> um oh, it's just it's just super cool yeah mm -hmm. i'm just stoked and um the i think the cool thing about just on that point is that the people that are into these the, like the fans and, and the people that enjoy these sorts of stories um are into it because they're about those bigger stories. There's, uh, it's rare that you're going to meet someone that's going to go, no, I'm not going to watch your thing because you did a DC thing. Right. You betrayed, like, no, you didn't betray my others. Like, I love, I love all these characters. So it's like if you get the very fortunate opportunity to to work on both, then yeah, it's super cool. But yeah, my. My, my buddies, my comic book buddies are pretty stoked. Now you're you're working on, or you have work. Now you uh, are you guys still filming uh, Star Girl? Are you yeah. that done? It's, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. It's going to be through till we're in Atlanta. I'm actually just back in New York with, with my family at the moment. But um, yeah, through till about the middle of September, we're going to be for the first season. Okay. So, so you're filming Star Girl, which yeah. is. Uh, Obviously, DC Comics is going to be aired on their uh, DC uh, U app, the DC Universe app, with the yeah. with, with Titans and the other shows. Um, tell us a little bit about Star Girl, because I'm actually very interested in that myself, actually. So, uh, tell us a little bit about Star Girl. Star Girl is is based on obviously a, a, a DC comic, which the the writer of the show. It's kind. Of, it's a pretty. It's a cool story. The, the writer and the showrunner of the show, his name's Jeff Johns. Um, Very if, if, you're, if you're a comic fan, you, you'd know Jeff Johns because he's kind of worked his way up to, to sort of be, he's had his hand in so many of the revamping and the, and the reworking of a lot of um, the good stuff that's been happening in the DC comic world. And Stargirl was the very first comic that he wrote for DC when he kind of got his his break, if you will. He, he came up with his character, and it's based on, and it's sort of a tribute to his sister who passed away. Oh wow! Uh, and from, and this isn't sort of talking out of turn, but from conversations that I've had, he, you know, he wanted to create a character that was that was positive and and good and a hero just kind of because of her qualities not necessarily because of any superpowers that she had but right. just like a, like a good person mm -hmm. so it's and the comics are out there so it, there's not like plot giveaways because well besides some of the characters and things but yeah, the, in in the comics, it's about a young teenage girl, Courtney Whitmore, who mm -hmm. moves to a, a a smaller town in Nebraska or somewhere called Blue Valley, and she's dealing. It's a little Buffy esque. She's dealing with with the new high school and the problems of finding friends and the cheerleading team and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. Then discovers that she's the daughter of. Starman, who was a member of the Justice Society, oh, and, um, and inherit like, and the adventures begin. So she's sort of doing this by day and then that by night, and um, it's oh man, it's mm. just it's great. The scripts are really good; they're really funny, and it's um, like it's not the tone's not super dark the stuff I've done recently has been but it's I think it's gonna really be um, I think it's gonna hit a real good chord yeah. and and the, the production and everything it feels like we're making a like a 13 part feature film wow like to the episodes like the 
budgets and what's happening and uh, like I've just had a few moments of just being on set just going oh, oh that was so cool marking out <laughs> what yeah. now now what now tell us about your character on the show on Stargirl I'm sorry if that's can. one of the things I can't actually. okay saving them um, <laughs> I can only just say that I'm in it and I'm having fun. Awesome. Uh, and it's good. But awesome. yeah, but in, in a cool way though, because one of the things that um, that Jeff's able to do because of his um, position in DC, in the DC world, is to sort of look for characters that, that have existed in the world but maybe haven't had a had a presence right so, uh, yeah so there's going to be a lot of cool surprises for fans because it's it's like they're going to be like oh that's so and so right awesome yeah and i like um have you i i have i liked a lot of the content so far on uh, as i'm plugging the the dc app um right. i like i like a lot of the content so far T titans doom doom patrol surprised me Right, <laughs> and man, I think this is what's so good about it because, and it's it's a similar strength to our show with with Star Girl because because they're making it, and I think this is the beauty and the brilliance of, of, of this sort of streaming revolution, if you will. Um, it, they're not making it for the advertisers; they're making it for the fans because yeah. the fans are paying for it because yeah. they're like, "Am I going to shell out my seven, eight bucks a month?" Yes, because. You just made Doom Patrol like it is in the comics because it is just kind of batshit crazy. Yeah, oh my god! As it's be, and it's fantastic. And it's so, f it's like it's like a it's like a tra it's like a car crash. You, you you can't keep you can't keep your eyes off it. Like I literally went into the first episode of Doom Patrol like, all right, I'll check it out. You know, right. yeah. you know, all right. I'll try and stay awake. I try, stay yeah, right. <laughs> Five minutes later, I'm like. Episode two. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, I'm coming to bed soon, honey. I'll uh, I just gotta watch one more Doom Patrol because. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I think that the 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 kind of um, and I think this speaks to the kind of wisdom in in the management from from DC and Warner Brothers and and the partners that are all making them is that they're going. Yeah, the more we lean into this the style of the show and push it that way, or the style of the comic and push it that way, rather than try and pull it back and, and sort of generically make something that they think people will like, I think they're realizing that the more they lean into what the show's act, what, what, what the story was originally about is, is that's when it when it pop, when it's just gonna make something that people will like. You're either gonna hate it and just go, that's what, mm -hmm. I don't, or you're just gonna go, oh yeah, let's watch them all. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, and and it's so funny. I mean, I'm not gonna go into a whole uh, fanboy diatribe here, but I think what you said is very important in terms of uh, the content and gearing it toward the fans because that seems to be the formula used by the other guys, you know, right. and when they're making the movies as opposed to. You know when other movies are made and they don't hit hit as well or even the series sometimes doesn't hit as well so that's that's awesome that you're right in the middle of that you know and it sounds like yeah. you got a, a big big secretive role there that you can't tell us so you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's just, like, yeah, pretty much. just so super cool to be a part of just because yeah. because you know, i'm a fan as well and i just love these sorts of stories and yeah it's it's, mm -hmm. it's um it's like you pinch yourself sometimes just go, what what are we doing it's right. amazing. that's awesome yeah. that's awesome now you, you know you talked about your your journey a little bit in the, in the beginning um you know what kind of advice would you have for someone who has a vision and then you talked about basically creating your own work which led to something else so you know what would you what advice would you give to people um who are looking to either be an actor or actress or just in general, just have like a dream that they want to follow. What would you say to that person? And if they if they ask your advice, that is. <laughs> I would say 
is Ah, it's a, <laughs> it's a good question. Not to put you on the spot. Um, I think I'd I'd want to be. I think it needs to be measured. You have to want it. You, like I'd say, you have to really want it. Like if there's no, if if you can't really imagine yourself doing anything else, then all right, then you've got to do it. Right. If you go in a bit like, oh, I'd kind of like to do that, or I'd also like to maybe do with something else, then like do the something else. Mm-hmm. Get to the point where it. I think this is just to mature anyone who can kind of do anything if they really put their minds to it. Um, but yeah, if it if it doesn't like from your very first and original question if it doesn't come from a spark if it's not if it, it, you've got you've got to have that spark if you have that spark and, and, and that's what's firing you up and everything that you see in the world and, and that you enjoy if it's all about something then yeah focus in on that and do that and then just follow it just push it and know that there's going to be terrible times and hard times and but but if you if you find something and it brings you joy and and I think the most important thing I would say is find a tribe find find your people that you can make things with if whether you're a young actor and you want to put on a play or whether you're a young writer find other writers or find the young actors to read your play and put it or like community and tr- and tribe or find the people that are like go to the things or do just when you find a group of people that that get you and get your thing all of the best stuff that I love has always been created by like a couple of geeks that got together in high school mm-hmm. and then want to do whatever or or met doing you know th- those stories you just keep your radar on for, the, for for someone else that's into the same thing as you and will latch onto that person and and be generous and, and giving and, and invite other people in and if you can make a tribe of people that you can rise up you know someone said I don't know who it is a friend of mine though like you don't want to rise you don't want to rise through the ranks Mm-hmm. You want to you want to rise with the ranks, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna like the the, the the scene is set at the moment. It is how it is right now. You're gonna be one in a million or one in a billion if you just randomly score this job that shoots you up into the stratosphere. What I think the best advice is find find your peeps and just start making work. Just start whatever you're into. Just generate make it do it do it mm. run it make it you know it's so easy now just shoot it on your phone do whatever just make it and then do it again next weekend then do it again next weekend, and then find some other people and just and then rise together and then when someone's going to get a gig and do this and they're going to go do it and you like so many of my favorite filmmakers are still using all of the people that they worked on their first student film or right. that oh, like this happens and this is like I think that's your biggest strength find your peeps make the stuff that you love because eventually you're going to get paid to do something that you might not love which is okay you got to draw that line for yourself where, like what you're going to do but if you can always fall back and know that at the end of the day you don't need someone else to validate your art or your craft because unless that person says I'm going to pay you to do this job then you're not an actor or you're not a writer you know fuck that you can write every day with your friend and make your own st- and and that's the stuff that that matters and it's what teaches you the craft and makes you better and I think if you can 
take because it's a because it's a hard road. Mm. But if you have that community or that group, and you can be disciplined and have a love for it and want to change some things because the world needs some changing right now, then just get after it. I would say go for it. You know, that's more of it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, so Chris, how can what where are we gonna see you next outside of Agents of Shield and and um, Stargirl? We can't get into that premiere date in a minute. Um, yeah, Stargirl's gonna be out January next year. Um, and Agents of Shield, I'm doing like there's a few more episodes of that coming up. Um, I don't have anything else in between that. Okay. There's some other stuff like um, Ozark and. True Detective and Shades of Blue and a bunch of stuff that that is still available kind of online and if, if people want to check that stuff out but yeah it's, um, I'm just sort of gigging from thing to thing so and you know and writing and still trying to generate my own work and right. hopefully be directing a film later this year if that works awesome. um, it will yeah now, and where can people find you on social media? Uh, so on Instagram, I'm Christopher underscore James underscore Baker. And um, I'm going to be setting up some Twitter stuff too. But um, yeah, I'm also, yeah, so please follow along. I'm going to be doing, I, I, I'm just getting into that world. I've been a little bit hesitant about it because I sort of want I want everyone to be less on their screens and more making yeah. stuff and, and playing with peeps, but um, I'm going to try and do it in a um, in a positive yeah. way. So and we I'm need more of that on the social media sphere. Right. Yeah. Not just look at me in my pretend life, but <laughs> just like let's let's try and make some stuff. So yeah, get onto that if you want, and I'll try and live up to my end of that bargain. And but yeah. All right, sir. Thank you so, Chris. Thank you so much. Seriously, it's been a, a pleasure talking to you, and I mean that sincerely. No, thank you too. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, bro. No problems. Uh, so. Cool. Well, um, yeah, let's do it again soon, maybe. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely like to talk to you um, before Star Girl comes out. After you know, everything's are off the, you know, everything's unwrapped. You yeah, we're well, unwrapped. <laughs> For sure, yeah. yeah. And I can get I can get some of the other cats on the cast to have a chat with you as well. Because... Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be right awesome. I, I definitely, I, I definitely, I promise not to fanboy out as a car carrying comics fan. I'm a professional. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Do it. I mean, this is the thing. We all got into it because we love this stuff. So yeah, it's um, it's like oh my god, like meeting Jeff Johns, who's running the show. It's just like oh my god. No, I can dig it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's cool stuff. So, yeah, I'm I'm all for it, man. All right, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, next come up family, Christopher James Baker. Thank you so much, sir. Peace, everyone. Right. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Man. Thanks. Talk bro. to you soon. All right. Bye, brother. All right, take care.